When we are trying to change our lives, fear is often the thing that holds us back. You set these goals for yourself, whatever they might be, and as you get really close to the action steps of those goals, you find yourself feeling like you're hitting a wall. We are strong enough, we are brave enough, we are powerful enough to face that newness, to face that change is such a helpful way of looking at fear. To get to where we've never been before, we have to do things we've never done before. We have to be the version of ourselves we've never been before. It is a signal to you that you've, you've hit that comfort zone. You are at that ledge. You are there. That's exciting. That's a gift. Hi my friends, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Adrienne if you're new here. If you're not new here, thank you so much for clicking on another video. Today, beverage of the day is water. Yeah. <laughs> I already had a cup of coffee this morning. It's like going on 10 a.m. and I'm gonna have another cup of coffee later, so I'm saving it. So this is your reminder to hydrate. <laughs> so let's just jump into today's video. Today I want to talk to you about fear. Yeah something that we're all super familiar with, and something that I have struggled with, but have learned to reframe it in a way that is so helpful, and so I really wanna share it with you guys. So the basis in which we're gonna be talking about fear today is when we are trying to change our lives, we're trying to change something about our lives, we're trying to pivot, we're trying to do something new, fear is often the thing that holds us back, right? We get to a certain point, fear steps in, and we revert back to the way that things used to be because that's what we're that's what we're used to and we just don't push past the fear. And this kind of fear can be subtle, it can be sneaky, it can come in different ways and so I wanna talk about that as well today. But by the end of the video, I want you to have a clear reframe on fear in a way that makes it more helpful for you and in a way that you can learn to maybe even respect or, <laughs> I wouldn't say enjoy, but respect or understand your fear in a different way. First, I want to kind of talk about the ways in which fear can come up when we are trying to change and because it, like I said, it can be sneaky. So one of the ways in which fear can come up is in resistance. So I struggle with this probably the most out of all the ways in which fear can come up. And resistance, I think of as like hitting a wall. So you set these goals for yourself, whatever they might be, career-oriented goals, life-oriented goals, financial goals, relationship goals, whatever it is. And as you get really close to the action steps of those goals, you find yourself feeling like you're hitting a wall. What that is is resistance. And that is one of the ways fear can come up. It doesn't necessarily feel like, oh my gosh, this is scary, I'm, I'm scared, I can't do this. But it is subconscious fear. It is your body saying, whoa, 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 stop. I've not been here before, I'm not comfortable with this, putting up a wall, and we're not moving past this. Nope, not gonna do it. That's one way that fear can come up. Another way that fear can come up is avoidance or procrastination. This is a way that fear can sneak in, and it can be sneaky in the way that you might not even necessarily think you're procrastinating, but let's say that you make a to-do list, right? And deep down you know that there are like two things on there that would move the dial forward in terms of your goals. But you find that you add all these other tasks that may seem like they're things that you need to get done and you find yourself doing all those tasks before you will even start those two that you know will move the dial. I used to do this all the time. Sometimes I still get stuck in this. This is your subconscious, again, from fear, fear of taking that action that you know is gonna change your situation, which is what you ultimately want, but your subconscious doesn't necessarily want it. <laughs> and so that fear that you're not necessarily feeling up front, but is deep down, is stopping you by having you do all these other things that are going to ultimately not let you take those steps that you know are gonna move you forward. So that's another sneaky way that it can come up. And the third way, which is the most obvious, is the actual literal feeling of fear or anxiety or nervousness when you need to take an action step that feels really big and really new to you. So whether you need to reach out to someone you've never reached out to before, you need to send your resume in somewhere, you have to post that content that you've been afraid to post, you will literally feel that fear and anxiety come up 
and you'll stop. So those are the ways that fear will present itself when you are trying to change your life. But now I want to talk about why that fear is there, because I think this is going to help you understand it in a different light. I know this is what helped me start to kind of reframe how I look at fear. So our brains are designed to keep us safe, but that doesn't always mean that they have the best interest in mind, <laughs> pun intended. What I'm trying to say is that long ago, when we were first evolving as humans, we were first on this planet, we, we were just here to survive until the next day, our brains started to equate change with a threat. Because once we figured out what would keep us alive another day, the best thing to do, like I'm talking about when we were cave people, right? Once we figured out what to do to stay alive, it was the most important thing for us to do was to survive. So we would do the same thing over and over and over and over in order to survive. That was the main goal at the time. I actually think about the movie, um, is it Brave? No, it's um, The Croods the animated movie. I always think about that movie. So it's a family, if you haven't seen it, it's an animated movie. It's really good. Go watch it. It's a, it's a family of cave people and they just do the same exact thing every day because they know that that has what kept, has kept them safe. And because there are so many things out in the wild that would threaten their survival, they know that at this time they, they do this and then they have to be home by this time back to their cave and then repeat rinse wash repeat the next day because that is what keeps them safe but there is one the main character the girl in the family the the daughter she is getting so tired of doing the same thing every day she wants to know what's out there but the dad is like no you can't go adventure you can't go see what's out there because you might die like because you don't know what's out there it might harm you it might hurt you you have to stay safe you have to do the same thing over and over fear 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 our brains do the same thing now. Even though we have evolved and we are hundreds of years past that, thousands, right? <laughs> yeah, thousands of years past that time, our brains still have the same instinctual brain that we had way back then. So whenever we try to change our lives or change something in our lives, our brain signals fear, 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 threat, 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 even though it's not a true th threat anymore. There's not things out in the wild that are trying to hurt or harm us we're just trying to change our lives from what we know is comfortable to something new that we've never experienced before. So I think that's a really good way of understanding where fear comes from and that when we are trying to change our lives or pivot something in our lives or start something new, we are simply just not used to it. We've never done it before. And so our brains are trying to protect us from, what, from an unperceived threat, from, from the newness, because we don't know what's out there. The thing is now though, we have evolved past that. We are in modern day, present day. We are strong enough. We are brave enough. We are powerful enough to face that newness, to face that change. We want that change. So understanding that that fear is just trying to keep you safe and kind of saying to it, thank you, fear. I see you. Or thank you, resistance. Or thank you, avoidance. Or thank you, procrastination. I see you. I see you're trying to keep me safe, but I've got this. I can do this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take these action steps, is such a helpful way of looking at fear and just kind of, I wouldn't say dissociating from it, but depersonalizing it. It doesn't have to lead you. You can just have fear next to you as a passenger on your way to your new life, but it doesn't have to control you. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of understanding where fear comes from and I think that's a really helpful foundation. But then the other piece that I really want you to think about that has helped me so much is that you can think about as well that when you are trying to change your life or when you are stepping into a new reality for yourself when fear comes up when resistance comes up procrastination avoidance however it comes up for you it is a signal and it is a gift because it is trying to tell you that you are near to that change so let's think about our comfort zones just visualize your comfort zone. <laughs> um, once we get close to that edge, that is when on the other side of that is where all that changes that we want, right? That's where the new career is. That's where the new relationship is. That's where the new life is. But we have to reach the limit and beyond of our comfort zone in order to get there. To get to where we've never been before, we have to do things we've never done before. We have to be the version of ourselves we've never been before. But that fear is gonna try to keep you in your comfort zone. 
So when you feel that fear, when you feel that resistance, all of that coming up, it is a signal to you that you've, you've hit that comfort zone. You are at that ledge. You are there. That's exciting. That's a gift. You are... And if you can cross that, if you can let that fear, like I said, be a passenger and not lead you and just say, okay, fear, here we are, but we're doing it anyways. We're going to take that action. We're going to reach out to that person. We're going to post that content. We're going to do it anyways because we are safe. We're okay. That is when the change starts to happen. And so I think if you can look at fear in those moments as a gift because it is signaling to you that you are there, you are at that point where you're going to change your life, I think it is such a refreshing way to look at fear and that is the reframe that has helped me beyond measure when it has come to going after the things i want to go after that feel really scary that are new that are going to cause me to go out of my comfort zone so just to reiterate what we talked about today there are different ways that fear can come up when you're trying to change your life or trying to change something in your life the main ways that I see it come up, especially for myself, are in resistance, hitting that wall, in procrastination, or avoiding the things you know are going to take you to that next step, next level, that new reality, or just plain fear, anxiety, nervousness when in, in taking an action. And then where that fear comes from is we know that that fear is just trying to keep us safe from a perceived threat that nowadays is not even, it's not a real threat. It's just, it's our brains computing any kind of change and any kind of discomfort as a threat, even though that's not really what it is anymore. And so when you feel that fear come up, you feel that resistance, you know it is a signal, it is a gift, it is trying to tell you, you are at your, your comfort zone limit. And beyond this, when you take this next step, you are going to go beyond your comfort zone and you are going to start changing so okay i hope that was helpful i hope you understood that let me know if you have any questions let me know what you thought was that helpful and i just want to let you guys know that my one-on-one -on -one coaching program is now open this is going to be a shortened first round of one-on-one -on -one coaching and so this is going to be the lowest my prices are going to ever be so if you are interested in doing this with me go ahead and reach out and I will send you more information. We can start at any time. Um, once payment is submitted, contract is submitted, we have a call together just to make sure we'll be a good fit to work together. Um, and so, yeah, I'm so excited to welcome in the clients of mine that are going to be coming in. And yeah, I think that's it. I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.